everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train, and I can't believe all the good deals I bought. Let's see if we can make some extreme budget meals. If you've been following me here for any amount of time, you know that I am all about trying to eat as healthy as we can and still be kind of on a budget. And I've been talking about this app for the past couple of weeks now. It is called Flash Food. And many of you have told me either one way or the other, whether you have a Flash Food location in your area or you don't, it's only in a few select stores right now. So hopefully it'll come to your area soon. But Flash Food is an app that some grocery stores have. And what they do is they mark down some of their foods to about 50% off to try to reduce food waste because some of the stuff they bring in, like if they don't sell it, they just throw it away. So then they offer it at super low prices. That way they can still make a little bit of money on it. And they will have just about anything on this app. I have found meat like steak and ground turkey, also produce, um, fruits and vegetables and cheese, yogurt, coffee creamer, that sort of thing. So I'm trying to challenge myself by making as many meals as I can using only what I find from flash food. So this is kind of an extreme budget challenge for me based on what's in my area. Obviously, if you have grocery stores in your area that have clearance markdowns and stuff, your meals are going to look different, but think of it as kind of a challenge. It's actually really fun. So let me tell you the cool things I found in this flash food order. So I found a box of zucchini and squash, and I found a box of bell peppers, all of which were $1.50 each. Now here's the funny thing. It might be funny. These, these boxes were in another city. I, I have a Meijer that's like five minutes away from me that I just go there to get my stuff. But th these boxes of vegetables were at a Meijer that was 30 minutes away. So I drove all the way down there to get them because my Meijer does not have a lot of vegetables in the flash food app. So I'm like, that's such a good deal. I need to go grab them. And then once I had them, I said, okay, what do I make with them? I also found a package of chorizo at my store for like $1.39. So I said, okay, I wonder if I can make a couple of things using this chorizo and the peppers and the zucchini and then whatever else I have laying around at home. So I have three extreme budget meals to show you today. Two of them are dinners and then one is kind of like a snack slash dessert using mostly ingredients that I had at home. In each of these recipes, I'm going to break down the cost for me, both for the total recipe and then the cost per serving, just to give you an idea of how little you can spend and still make pretty good meals. So with that being said, let's get started. Here are the ingredients I'll be using for the stuffed pepper soup. Um, so the chorizo down here, as you can see, it says $2.79, but I actually paid like $1.30 something for it from Flash Food. I'm also using kind of a combination of colored peppers because I got multi-colored peppers. So I'm using two green and one yellow. Feel free to use whatever kind you like. And then chicken broth, that's what I had, but you could use like vegetable broth or beef broth, whatever you have at home. So the first thing I need to do is start cooking this chorizo. What I like about this recipe, I mean, I'm using chorizo, but obviously you can use whatever kind of meat you want, whether you have ground beef, ground turkey, ground chicken, whatever you have, it'll still work. I'm just happy that I was able to find this for really cheap. And it's this is the hot chorizo, so I'm excited to see how spicy this really is.
now that everything in here is cooked, we can add the rest of the ingredients. So I have two cans of diced tomatoes, and then I have two small cans of tomato sauce. All together, it's about 16 ounces. And then I have my chicken broth. Um, I don't know if I need to add any more water. I think looking at this, it should be just fine. And then I'll add some seasonings and then let it simmer for a while. While that is cooking, you can cook some rice. I just have, uh, I think it's one full cup of uncooked rice in here. I'm using my rice cooker, but you can also use stovetop if you need to. By the time this is finished, the soup should be done. This recipe makes six very nice servings. So in a bowl, I just put a little bit of rice on the bottom and then put some of the soup on top of that. Now this recipe only cost right around $5, which means that it is about 83 cents per serving. That is not bad. This is how much zucchini and squash I have left after like two different meals. So I think I can use up the rest of these with two different things maybe. I'm going to attempt some zucchini bread using about four of these and the rest are going to go in a side dish for later. But for now, let's start on the zucchini bread. I am actually doubling this recipe. So I'm going to use four of these zucchini. That might be a little much. Um, we'll have to see. I think I need about three cups of zucchini. So I wonder if I should only use just three of these. I think I'll start with that and see where we are. And using my food processor honestly is one of the easiest and fastest ways to shred things. Okay, yeah, that definitely looks like three-ish cups. So now we need to kind of squeeze out some of the ex extra water and stuff. So just got some paper towels here. I'm gonna press it down really good. Now zucchini has a ton of water in it. So you might have to use multiple paper towels to get it. And like most sweet breads, you will want to mix together the wet ingredients in one bowl and the dry in another. So like I said, I am doubling the recipe and I plan on freezing some of it. That way we can enjoy some of it later. So I am using a mixture of whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour. I like my bread to be soft, but I also want some extra fiber in there. Um, now, white whole wheat flour kind of creates the same texture where it is soft like the all-purpose flour, but it also still has all the fiber in it. I have just been buying whole wheat flour and then I bought some all-purpose flour like for cookies and stuff and I've never actually gotten around to buying white whole wheat flour so I might just you know keep both of these here and then just mix them up when I need to. Another thing I didn't mention before was that I used applesauce instead of the oil that it called for and using applesauce lowers the calories and the fat content of the bread. 
but I did that because I wanted to put peanut butter on top of my slices. That's how I like to eat them. So by taking out the fat from the bread, I'm adding it again to the bread by putting peanut butter on top when it's done. I also wanted to add in some chocolate chips because I feel like if you're gonna get a sweet treat, at least for me, it needs some chocolate in it. Alright, now I'm going to put these in for about 50 minutes and then we'll check them after that and see if they're done. Let me tell you, this bread is so good. I sliced each one up into eight slices and I froze some of it and put peanut butter on top like I had mentioned. Now this bread for just one single loaf only cost around $1.50 to make and that makes it about 18 cents per slice. Next up, I made fajitas, or rather, my rendition of fajitas. I got some black beans out of the pantry, and I'm using three of the bell peppers, as well as some of the zucchini and squash. So the first thing I did was put a tablespoon of olive oil in the big pot, and I sliced up all the bell peppers and the onion and the zucchini and the squash and put it in this big pot. Now I'm not sure if zucchini or squash actually goes into fajitas, but I had it on hand and sometimes you just gotta make do with what you have. It definitely added a bunch of extra vegetables to it and a bunch of fiber. And this is a nice vegetarian and vegan dish. I'm using the black beans, which have plenty of protein and fiber, getting lots of fiber from the vegetables as well. We're using the refined flour tortillas instead of like whole wheat tortillas. But since we're getting a lot of fiber from everything else, I was not worried about it. As far as seasonings go, I used chili powder, cumin, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. If I had had maybe a packet of taco seasoning, I would have done that. Um, you can feel free to add any of your favorite seasonings to it as well. But I let these saute for about five to 10 minutes. I waited until almost until they were finished being soft and then I added the two cans of kidney beans. I made sure to drain and rinse them before adding them in. What I like about this is that you can just mix it up however you want to. As you can see, I used zucchini and squash because that's what I had available. I used three different kinds of bell peppers. Use whatever you have available. And I mean, it was super, super cheap for me. And can you believe this served four people? all of this food. What I actually did was put some in a bowl and then on a separate plate, I put some tortillas. I only used two, but feel free to use more because that was way too much filling for all those tortillas. 
Anyway, the total cost for this was about $2.18 for the entire recipe, which means it was about 54 cents per serving. So altogether, I spent maybe about $10 to get 16 servings of everything that you saw today. So an extra couple of food tips for you. If you cannot use up all of this produce in like the next few days, you can try freezing some of it. What I'm gonna do with any bell peppers that are left over is dice them up. I'm gonna lay them on a cookie sheet with parchment paper and freeze them. And then from there, I'll put it into a gallon size freezer bag. And those bell peppers will be good for like sauteing, maybe adding in soups or casseroles, once you freeze certain vegetables like that, they're not really all that great to eat raw just because it, it has a weird texture, it becomes very watery, so it's much better to cook those kind of vegetables. I believe you can also shred zucchini and freeze that as well. Let me know if you have done that. I have yet to do it, but I think I might if I have any of this left over. Also, try to keep some pantry essentials on hand at all times for when you get ingredients like this and want to make a meal out of it. Foods like beans, rice, diced tomatoes, salsa, things like that. If you have some of those main components of a meal, you'll be able to throw something together. I hope this has given you a few ideas and has shown you that you can eat healthier foods even while on a budget. I'm going to leave my link to the Slash Food app down below. If you use that code, then you will get a $5 reward when you spend $10 on your first purchase. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and do so right now and like this video and ring that bell so you'll be notified when more videos like this come out, as well as my other grocery hauls, recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you later. Did you know I offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching? Whether your goal is to lose weight, eat healthier, or just want to know how to get started, I can help. You can schedule a free weight loss discovery call by using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to chat with you.